evening and a very warm welcome to Songs of Thanksgiving, the first joint church's Grace Night we've had in 15 years. So it's very special to be back together again after what we've all gone through in these, uh, in these months. And uh, I trust you're all in good singing voice tonight as we've come to praise the Lord. And especially after the months when we were restricted in church with no singing, and although we found some degree of uh, liberty, yet we have the masks, but still we can sing heartily and uh, full of praise to God. And that's what we're here to do, to give thanksgiving to the Lord, to bless his name for his goodness to us, for what he means to us, and what he means in our lives, for what he's done in our salvation, and in the day-to-day -day relationship we have with our Lord and Savior. Now, we're going to begin uh, with a very bright and strong and vibrant introduction by these two young lads here. so that it's not too loud. And we want you to enjoy the music, not to have to endure our time together. So the, me the meeting has not been live streamed. There are too many technical things that could go wrong, but it's being recorded, and we'll, we'll review the, the recording, and hopefully it is uh, presentable and posted on our page sometime this week. So have a look out for that. Um, now, so we're going to turn to praise. Um, we've got a full program of hymns, a Gaelic psalm, and some modern songs, we had a short talk, and so quite a lot to, to pack into our hour together. We want to begin with uh, the song, I Heard the Voice of Jesus, followed by Jesus Strong and Kind. And after that, Thomas will come and give his personal greeting and lead us in prayer. So let's begin to worship the Lord.
Thank you so much, Duncan. Thank you all so much for coming on this evening. It's just so good to have to sit down so that I'm not too tall for It's so lovely to see you all here and really grateful to you all for coming along. And it's just, um, tonight's just brilliant for lots of reasons. It's brilliant because it's been such a long time since we've been able to do something like this and with COVID and everything. Uh, it's brilliant because we're welcoming people from outside of Carloway and we're so delighted to have those, uh, those of you who come to join us for this evening. Um, but the thing that is most brilliant is that we are together as two churches for this tonight, which is just amazing. So thank you so much for coming along tonight, and thank you to you, Duncan, and to everyone who's helped uh, prepare for this evening. Um, this is just, this is the kind of method that puts a big, big smile on my face. Thank you. I'd love to play uh, just now, so let's just bear with some Father, we just thank you so, so much uh, that we can come together this evening, um, that we can come together to sing your praises, to worship you, that we can be together as brothers and sisters in Jesus, um, united in our love for you and in our love for one another. We thank you so much that we have this opportunity to be together this evening. And as we come to offer you these songs of thanksgiving, um, there's so much for us to be thankful for. We're so thankful for the way in which you've uh, looked after us and helped us and um, over these past couple of years uh, through the pandemic. We thank you so much for um, all the work that's been done um, by NHS staff and by school teachers and by key workers across the nation. We thank you so much for that. Thank you for the civil servants who carry so much burdens for the nation. We thank you for all those who were involved in the development and distribution of the vaccine. We thank you for all the ways in which you helped and protected us. We also want to, to pray for all those who, who lost loved ones in the past two years. And we pray that you would bring comfort and hope uh, to the many, many families across the world um, who have been left and believed because of what's happened over the past couple of years. So we just pray for them um, and we just come to you so thankful for all your help, but we know that we're not, that it's not over yet, and we just pray for your protection over the, the winter months, especially for any um, who may be vulnerable, um, we, we pray for your ongoing protection over us all. We also want to just give you thanks for um, so many um, blessings that we've enjoyed um, over many years. We think of, of um, even just over the last uh, 20 years, we think of the work that's been done here in Carloway. We thank you so much for the ministries of Don McDonald, of Murdo Campbell, uh, of Kenny, of Stephen, of Ben, of Duncan. We thank you so much that we're able to continue that ongoing work together. And for all those who served uh, here uh, in our congregations, we thank you so, so much for everyone who's a part of your family here. And we just pray that that family will grow, um, that we will grow in our maturity, that we grow in our love for one another, but also that we would grow in our numbers, because we long to see people in this community coming to faith in Jesus. And so we pray that that uh, through through tonight, through all that we hope to do together over the coming months, um, and through our own witness and as individual believers and as a collective body, we pray that you would just be using us to bring people to faith in Jesus. And Father, that's what we want to thank you for most of all. In, in all the different things that we, we, we want to give you thanks for, we want to thank you more than anything for our Saviour, Jesus. We thank you that you gave him so that we might have eternal life. We thank you for everything that you've done for us in and through your beloved Son. So we are here tonight to give you our thanks for all your goodness to us. We're here to praise your wonderful name. Amen. We're now going to sing um, the hymn Rock of Ages, but this is a slightly different version that, that may be new to some of you. Um, Rock of Ages is one of my favourite hymns. It's just an absolute, it's just an absolute belter of a hymn. Um, and so the old version I love, but this new, this slightly different version, which which may be new to some of you, is just so beautiful. It's very simple, um, so you'll be able to to, to follow it quite easily. Just um, as you see the first verse. Uh, the first verse, uh, 
Isabel will guide you uh, as to whether you go up or down at the end of the line. You'll understand what I mean when I say that. When you're seeing it, sometimes when you reach the end of the line, you think, oh, do I go up, do I go down? Just follow Isabel's finger. She'll either point up or point down. <laughs> she, if you do it wrong, she'll just point up. <laughs> so you can just follow Isabel's uh, guidance there. It's, it's a, a lovely, beautiful uh, melody, um, and even more beautiful are the words. So um, in a moment after we've made the introduction, we'll stand and sing the Brooklyn of Ages, correct from
visible on guitar and leading beautifully. And now it uh, comes to me to, to sing a song. And I've chosen a one that I wrote the words to recently to a beautiful Gaelic tune, Cat Cochran. Hopefully you'll all know it. Hands up, those who know it. The Ronic song, Cat Cochran. Oh, please, I hope you'll know it because we're going to sing along to it. And uh, I'll go through the introduction very briefly. one line, praise to the Lord, which we repeat four times, and then it will come at the end of the fourth verse. Back to verse 1, as I quote it, 
this is part of the chapter, but I feel so nervous. I think we ought to just spend a few moments in prayer and come before the Lord again. Let's, let's pray in prayer. <coughs> Gracious God and loving Father, we sense there's something very beautiful that God has just been sung, an ancient hymn written in an ancient language and yet been sung in the language of this culture, of this people, of this island, and how it's moved our appearance and our generations past, the sound of the valley sound and the beauty of it, Lord. We thank you when the Spirit of God comes upon such such a word, it moves us, it moves us deeply. And tonight, Lord, we feel just empty and humble in your presence, and we want to ask that the Spirit of God will bring days upon us again when this island will again be raised up in the preaching of the gospel by the by the love of Christ being shed abroad as we proclaim his love to our neighbors and to our community. We pray that again that Psalms and Gaelic and, and, and English will be heard across the glens and the moors of and the villages of Lewis. And Father, we thank you that it can be so moved by a beautiful music, but also covered with the anointed word of God. So Lord, we treasure your word, we treasure the Psalms and what they bring to us. And we just pray that we would be changed by your word, even tonight. And that your spirit would cause something deep within us to long for days of spiritual renewal. That we wouldn't look back in the past, but look forward to what God might do for us in these days. We bless you and thank you through Jesus Christ our Lord. A nice array of all these cups. After which we have a testimony. Is that the top? Yeah, that'll be top from you. Yeah, top from you.
as Jan comes to give his tes ten minute testimony, we have the testimony time of the year. <laughs> <laughs> people go, oh, hands up, Jan. I'm sure you'll be just on the bus.
we love to be around people who are positive. We love to be around people who, and folk will be drawn to you. If you're going to be an encourager, folk will be drawn to you. The Greek word Paul chose in Philippians to describe encouragement is paraklesis, I think it's described. Um, it's a Greek military term, I believe. And uh, the Roman army were amazing. They conquered everywhere they went, didn't they? Um, but there was a reason for that. They had uh, what they called paracletes marching beside them. Um, now these guys were marching beside the army and they used to sing songs of victory to the guys as they were marching. They would remind the soldiers of previous victories, of past victories. Um, they would tell the soldiers and remind the soldiers of how good they were. They would tell the soldiers that they were going to win the oncoming battle. And they also watched the soldiers' backs when they were marching and when they were in battle. And as a result of this, the Roman army became one of the most powerful armies ever to march. So it's maybe no surprise. <clears throat> so, how does that affect us tonight? When we are encouraged, we win victories. When we're encouraged, we win battles. When we're encouraged, we defeat the enemy of our soul. When we're encouraged, we rise above the storms of life. When we're encouraged, we overcome. When we're encouraged, we become more than conquerors. But the key, the key is the paracletos, the encouragement of others. It's another word for the Holy Spirit, isn't it, in the Bible? Um, and that's what the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit is the greatest encourager of all. The Holy Spirit gets alongside us. The Holy Spirit encourages us all the time. But he mostly does it through you and through me. So if we're going to make a difference out there in the world, if we're going to influence our families, if we're going to influence our neighbours, our neighbourhood, our work colleagues, um, folk that we do life with, you know, on the golf course, the football pitch, if we're going to influence these people for the gospel and for the kingdom, then we need to be an encourager. Um, Luke 17 and 2 is our next short reading. So, Jesus said to his disciples, Things that cause people to stumble are bound to come, but woe to anyone through whom they come. It would be better for them to be thrown into the sea with a millstone tied round their neck than to cause one of these little ones to stumble. So watch yourselves. <laughs> it's quite something. God isn't messing about here. He's not playing games. He's saying... You know, if we cause another Christian, especially a young, a young Christian, another person to stumble and fall, then there are severe consequences for us. And uh, as my skin Afghani used to say, um, just a, a, an amazing woman, I might get emotional here again, um, just a beautiful free Presbyterian woman. She gave birth to 11 children. Her husband died, my grandpa died when, she was, when he was only 50. So the youngest one was a maid in arms, the oldest girl would have been 15. And just, she was a wonderful example. And she left the family a tremendous legacy uh, of how to act and behave. You know, her life was just such an example. And uh, I think Duncan actually touched on this this morning in the sermon. I think he looked up a picture. He found the picture of your dad and uh, it just brought back all the feelings of the, the old days and the love and the care and you know that our parents have for us and i think we need to you know we need to respect and honor our sharers and our grannies and our mums and dads godly men and women that you know pray for us on a daily basis um anyway i'm going 
we're off now. We'll get to it, but she used to say, you've probably heard, you've probably heard this before, um, if you don't have anything good or wholesome to say about anyone, then don't say anything at all. So we really must encourage one another and build each other up. And we've already touched on, on that tonight. You know, isn't, isn't this amazing? It's just wonderful. We're building each other up. Churches working together. Christians working together. And again, that's that's another tremendous uh, witness and testimony to the, the community here. Not just the community here, but the whole island and even on to the mainland and beyond. And the legacy of that will, you know, hopefully last for years. <clears throat> So, let's encourage one another. Young person to old person, old person to young person, but especially I think the young people. Um, quite a lot of young folks in our midst tonight, and that's great to see. Um, let's encourage them in school. Let's encourage the young people in marriages. Let's encourage people in business. Let's encourage our family life. Let's encourage folk at our work. But most of all, most of all, and most important of all, let's encourage each other in our walk with God. And, and, and in closing, just briefly, um, I suspect most of us in here tonight are saved. <laughs> but if you're not, if you're not a, a, a Christian tonight, can I encourage you? Can I encourage you to get to know and love this wonderful Saviour that the rest of us in here tonight know and love? Um, if we go to Acts chapter 4, Acts chapter 4 and verse 12. Okay, it says this. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. And we need saved, don't we? <laughs> you just gotta turn on your telly, you just gotta read a newspaper, listen to the radio, to know that the world's in a mess, to know that uh, sin has entered and caused a separation between us and, and God. Folks, there's a heaven to gain tonight and a hell to shun. There's eternity with Jesus and his saints, or there's eternal damnation. So what's it to be? What are you going to do with Jesus? Not what is your shenner or your granny or your mum or your dad or your neighbour going to do with Jesus, but what are you going to do with Jesus? You suffered, bled and died on the cross for you, on the cross of Calvary. Are you going to accept him or are you going to reject him? The ABC of salvation is very straightforward. You, you admit or you accept that you've sinned and come short of God's glory. You believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and accept his forgiveness into your heart and life. And then you go out and you confess him to other people. Revelation 3 and 20. And we'll finish with this. Here I am, says Jesus. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. Amen. Thank you so much, John. Um, yeah, just wonderful words to speak about. And just a good reminder of, of what an encouragement it is to be together tonight and what an encouragement we can all be to one another uh, over uh, the weeks and months ahead. Uh, one thing's for sure, we absolutely need each other and we need each other's life, uh, each other's encouragement. So thank you so much for what you shared uh, tonight, John. And thank you so much to all of you for, for being with us uh, this evening. Our closing uh, item is... Uh,
is a, a hymn whose words might be unfamiliar to you, but the tune you will all know. Uh, the hymn's called Your Grace Will Never Be Forgot. Um, it's to the tune of Old Lang Syne, um, so you'll all know the tune, and you can all um, sing out um, as loud as you can uh, as we sing this together. And um, as we sing through it, there's a, a, a wonderful, um, the, the fourth verse um, always makes me think of, a, of our, our churches here in Carlow. It says, In unity we'll stand as one, as family we'll go, shoulder to shoulder, hand in hand, into the great unknown. And I think that's a great description of what we are and of what we want to be um, as churches together here uh, in Carlow. So I'm going to ask you all to stand and we will introduce this one. Stand together if you're with a friend, if I'm, let's link arms and show a, an expression of Christian unity. That's what we're here to do tonight. So if you love the person, you feel close to them, let their arm and we're going to sing that song again. So, band, take your way, guys. Douglas.
happy to have everyone for coming to make this evening special, making this precious event in our lives to this year. We're building a foundation that's been laid by the predecessors of ministers, and it's a privilege to be part of what is ongoing. And Thomas and I hope to build new things, not just to, to build along what's already existed in, in previous years, but as we're bonded together, as we're seeking the Lord, we will do new things to bless the community and to encourage one another. We take that word that John has said. It's great to, to encourage each Christian. And we want to, as denominational uh, family, encourage one another uh, as we go on together in beautiful Christ-like unity. So let's pray and then we'll finish. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the, the taste of love and goodness that we have experienced here tonight as brothers and sisters in the Lord locally and from afar off have come to give thanks to our God and to his Christ, the love of our soul and our Saviour. And for all that he has done and means to us, Lord, from the bottom of our heart, we say thank you. Thank you for all eternity that we'll spend with you to praise and to worship our God, the amazing grace that came to save us. So, Father, part us with joy, the joy of knowing Christ and that he goes before us to prepare our way in life and in eternity. We pray that each of us will be fruitful in our lives, no matter what our age, from the youngest to the oldest, that we'll find a place to serve Christ and to, to serve one another. So that the joy that we've known tonight, Lord, and the love of Christ that is shed by our hearts be shed by us as we go from this place, as we tell others of the wonderful love of Christ. May the blessing of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest and abide with each and every one of us this night and ever born.